Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mazer Troll Tips and Tricks. If this is your first time here, my name is Phil, and I teach people how to set up and run a Mazak CNC lathe while programming it with Mazer Troll. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to adjust the machine's X and Z backlash parameters. This is necessary to perform as the machine wears over time and gets more play in the ball screw nut for X and Z. Alright, let's get started. Alright guys, over here at the parameter page, on page 2, is the backlash parameters. It's BL. And BL stands for Backlash Compensation. Used to electrically compensate the X and Z axis move errors with respect to the command for programming. Uh, the X axis value is a radius and it's 0 to 255 on the setting range, but we're not ever going to be near that high. So right now, my backlash is dialed in on this machine at 100 on X and 23 on Z. So the first thing we're going to do is move the machine to an average location where the X OD turning tools would be, and the boring bars would be. Uh, the backlash on this machine is only one value, and you cannot map it throughout the range. So this is essentially a crude compensation, but you basically pick it, the spot where you're normally machining and adjust the backlash from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce these values uh, to 50 and 10 just so there's something in it because there's usually a parameter in it. The backlash is never zero even from the factory brand new. There is some play in the ball screw. So what we want to do is put a test indicator on the machine with an average position for the turning tools and the boring bars. So right now I have it about four inches away on Z for the turning tool, but a long boring bar would be right up at the face. So I'm going to use this position for the calibration. So what we do is put a test indicator on the machine, zero it out, and now the backlash compensation is a direct immediate value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into uh, times 10 increments, which is 1,000th. This machine's set up in inches. And I'm going to move Z back and forth and it's supposed to go 1,000th and it's not. It's only going about half of that. So basically go right to left and you should see the needle move a thousandths per the manual pulse generator. So now I'm going to put the value back up to 23 where it was. And now I'm going to zero the indicator out and zero and it's moving a thousand back and forth exactly like it should be. So the backlash is dialed in for Z. Now we need to come over here to X. about there. Now 
Now we'll move X up and down one thousandth, or actually uh, ten thousandths, because X is cut in half. Because X is on a diameter value, a one thousandth pulse movement is only going to move the machine five tenths. So I'm going to go to the five thousandths increment so I can actually see a little more movement on the indicator. And it's not quite going five thousandths. It's going about four and a half. So I'm going to move the compensation back up to, well, let's go to 80. And let's try it again. So it's not quite right, so let's go back to 100. And it's overcompensating a little bit based on where I have it. So let's dial it down just a little bit. So let's go 90 instead. All right, now we're back on the one, one thousandths increment. So we should only see the needle move five tenths. And it's actually jumping too much on this setting. So the, the hundred that I had in there, where it's at at this position is a little too much. And again, like I said, it's, this is an average value. So if we move the x-axis down an inch it's going to be slightly different so you have to kind of map it out and give yourself an average value so actually at 80 right now that looks pretty good for where this is sitting if we move it down it's going to be slightly different but anyway you get the idea of where the compensation lies and how to adjust it. The bigger the number, the more it's going to compensate. And the smaller the number, the less it's going to compensate. This is important to do before you do any tool probe calibration. And that's what's coming up in the next video. So get the backlash dialed in and then go for your calibrating your tool pro. And that's how to set the backlash compensation on this machine for a T2 and a T3 control. If you like what you see, go ahead and push that subscribe button and click the bell so you won't miss any future videos we have coming out. Also, if you guys have suggestions for future videos, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching.